Hello! Today, we're going to have fun and enjoy while learning generating patterns. I am Joy Dons and welcome to Grade 10 Mathematics. Our target for today, we're going to define pattern, sequence, finite, and infinite sequence. Then, list the next few terms given several consecutive terms of a sequence and derive the general rule to generate the sequence by pattern searching. Okay, now look at the pictures carefully. Then tell me what did you see? Very good! We saw patterns. We discovered a pattern in the picture a while ago. A pattern is something that is arranged by following a rule. But where can you find patterns? In nature, music, arts, even in sleep habits, and investments or businesses. Okay, let's try answering this. What will be the next two shapes? Very good. It's diamond and oblong. How about this one? J, F, M, A, M, J, J, A, S, blank, blank, and blank. What will be the next three letters? Okay, J is for January, F, February, M, March, A, April, M, May, J, June, J, July, A, August, S is for September, and the next three letters will be O and B. O is for October, N is November, and D is December. Did you see the pattern? Understanding a pattern can help us extend the pattern and create new patterns. How about this? 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. And 2, 4, 6, and 8. Yes, we have a number pattern. Important notes. A numerical pattern is a sequence of numbers that has been created based on a formula or rule called pattern rule. Sequence is an ordered set of numbers that follows a rule. We have here an example of sequence. The first one, 5, 10, 15, and 20. And that is the terms in the sequence. 5 is your first term. 10 is your second term, 15 is your third term, and 20 is your fourth term. The order or number of terms in the sequence is denoted by N. 5 is represented by A sub 1, A sub 2 is 10, A sub 3 is 15, and A sub 4 is 20. We go now for the second given sequence. Again, 2, 5, 8, 11, and so on. That is the terms in the sequence. The order or number of terms in the sequence is denoted by N. So, 2 is your A sub 1, 5 is A sub 2, 8 is A sub 3, 11 is A sub 4, and so on. The first sequence is called finite sequence because the last term is given, while the second one is called infinite sequence because of the three dots called ellipsis which means the sequence will continue endlessly take note that when the sequence is going up try to find a pattern using addition or multiplication and when the sequence is going down try to find a pattern using subtraction or division the rule must be repeated three times to be a pattern. 
Example number one. How to find a pattern in a numeric sequence? 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, blank and blank. The key points here is to look what is happening in the first term going to the second term. The given sequence is going up, so we're going to use either addition or multiplication. So that's where we're going to start. Look at the first term, that is 3. What happened between 3 and 5? It add up 2. Between 5 and 7, again, add 2. Between 7 and 9, you'll add 2. The rule says it must be repeated 3 times for it to become a pattern. So, we have now a pattern. That is, by adding 2 to get the next term. Let us continue. 9 plus 2 is 11. 11 plus 2 is 13. And 13 plus 2 is 15. The second given sequence is 2, 4, 8, 16, blank, blank, and 128. What happened between 2 and 4? We add up 2. How about 4 and 8? 4 plus 2 is 6. Nope. We need 8. So, we must add 4. Between 8 and 16, we add 8 to get 16. As you can see, they're not the same. So, it's not a pattern. How about we use multiplication instead of addition? Let's try it out. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. So now we have a pattern. We multiply it by 2. Let's continue. 16 times 2 is 32. 32 times 2 is 64. 64 times 2 is 128. So our pattern is correct. Example number 2. Find out what is the general rule in the given sequence 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on. Solution. After writing the sequence, let's write now what is the value of n. And that is 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Our a sub 1 is 5, a sub 2 is 7, a sub 3 is 9, and a sub 4 is 11. What happened between 5 and 7? You'll add 2. Between 7 and 9, add 2. Between 9 and 11, add 2. So, let's write a sub n is equal to 2n. Since we're looking for the general term or rule. Solving now for a sub 1, we're going to substitute n by 1. So, a sub 1 is equal to 2 multiplied by 1 and that is 2. Look at the value of our a sub 1 in the given sequence. That is 5, so it's not correct. Let's go back to our sequence. 2 multiplied by 1 is 2. 5 minus 2 is 3. Then, 2 multiplied by 2 is 4. 7 minus 4 is 3. 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. 9 minus 6 is 3. And, 2 multiplied by 4 is 8. 11 minus 8 is 3. So, we're going to add 3 for us to have 5. a sub 1 now is equal to 2 plus 3. That is 5. Let's check. a sub 1 is equal to 5. Correct. Our general rule now is a sub n is equal to 2n plus 3. Solving for a sub 2. a sub 2 is equal to 2 multiplied by 2. That is 4 plus 3. It is equal to 7. For a sub 3, it is equal to 2 multiplied by 3, that is 6, plus 3, it is equal to 9. And a sub 4 is equal to 2 multiplied by 4, that is 8, plus 3, it is equal to 11. Example number 3. What is the general rule in the given sequence? 0, 2, 6, and 12. Let's write the value of n, that is 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, let's concentrate at the given sequence. What number can you think of that we can multiply to 1 so that we can have a 0? Correct! We multiply 1 to 0. So, 1 times 0 is equal to 0. How about the second term? Give me a number that we can multiply to 2 so that we can have an answer of 2. Correct! That is 1. 2 multiplied by 1 is equal to 2. Next, we can multiply 3 to 2 to give us 6. And 4 multiplied by 3, the answer is 12. 
Now, we have a sub n is equal to n multiplied by quantity n minus 1. Why n minus 1? Because, as you can see, we multiplied n to its value less than 1. Solving for a sub 1 now, it is equal to 1 multiplied by 1 minus 1, which give us 0. So, 1 multiplied by 0, that is equal to 0. Now, our general rule is a sub n is equal to n multiplied by quantity n minus 1. For a sub 2, we have 2 multiplied by quantity 2 minus 1, which give us 1. So, 2 multiplied by 1 is equal to 2. For a sub 3, we have 3 multiplied by quantity 3 minus 1, which give us 2. So, 3 multiplied by 2, a sub 3 now is equal to 6. For a sub 4, we have 4 multiplied by quantity 4 minus 1, which give us 3. So, 4 multiplied by 3, a sub 4 now is equal to 12. Example number 4. What is the general rule in the given sequence 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on? Solution, we write the value of n, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. To get the first term, 1 multiplied by 1, it will give us 1. 2 multiplied by 2, the answer is 4. Then, 3 multiplied by 3, that is 9. And 4 multiplied by 4, it is equal to 16. Our general rule is a sub n is equal to n squared. Now, solving for a sub 1. a sub 1 is equal to 1 raised to 2 or 1 multiplied by 1. The answer is 1. a sub 2 is equal to 2 squared or 2 multiplied by 2. The answer is 4. a sub 3 is equal to 3 squared or 3 multiplied by 3, the answer is 9, and a sub 4 is equal to 4 squared or 4 multiplied by 4, the answer is 16. Example number 5. Write the first three terms of the sequence whose general rule is given by a sub n is equal to 4n minus 2. Solution, a sub n is equal to 4n minus 2. Solving for the first term or a sub 1, substituting n by 1, we have a sub 1 is equal to 4 multiplied by 1 minus 2, that is 4 minus 2, a sub 1 is equal to 2. Solving for the second term or a sub 2, substituting n by 2, we have a sub 2 is equal to 4 multiplied by 2 minus 2, that is 8 minus 2, a sub 2 now is equal to 6. Solving for the third term or a sub 3, substituting n by 3, we have a sub 3 is equal to 4 multiplied by 3 minus 2, that is 12 minus 2, a sub 3 is equal to 10. Therefore, the first three terms of the sequence is 2, 6, and 10. I hope you enjoy our discussion for today. See you again for our next lesson. Thank you, have a nice day, and God bless everyone!